Hello everyone, I'm Danny Darrow and I'm sitting in for Josie Ann's Persons of Interest, coming to you from the m and TV studios in New York City. And uh, we're on Fios, RCN, and Time Warner Cable every other Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the evening. So please try to watch us and uh, we'll have a little fun together. Uh, today we have with us uh, Tom Sullivan, who is the founder of Alliance Cigar, and we've got a lot of pictures to show you um, on all the different uh, cigars and, uh, and all the ideas uh, that Tom put together all these years and everything. And also Sammy Albano uh, from the Maven Media Group. And gentlemen, uh, the thank you once again for being with us. It's our second show. Thanks, Jim. Thanks yeah. for having us back. Yeah, well, no, thank you for having me because I like being here with you. Otherwise, I'm going to sit here by myself doing nothing. This is not good. Anyways, Tom, tell us about what's going on uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the wonderful cigars that you uh, make and produce and everything else. Well, I mean, a lot of the chatter right now obviously is about the coming excitement. People are starting to anticipate um, the lifting of the embargo with yeah. Cuba. Cuba, okay. Um, today already you are allowed to bring $100 worth of Cuban cigars back into the country for your own personal consumption. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, the consumer, we like to have choices. And to have a choice of something that we haven't had for 50 years is quite exciting. I think secondly, for people in the business like myself, what doesn't get a lot of talk is that once that embargo is lifted, you will see some of the famous cigar blenders and makers from Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, go to Cuba, purchase Cuban tobacco, which they've not been allowed to do before, mm -hmm. and blend it into um, Nicaraguan and Honduran and Dominican tobaccos and will give us an entirely new taste palette that the consumers never experienced. So there's, there's part A, which is having access to Cuban cigars. Yeah. And what's got most of us even more excited is part B, which is will be the creation of products that have never been created. Yeah, well, let me stop you right there. I know, Sam, you're going to ask the same question. I'm no, gonna, I'm I don't gonna know if you all. I want to ask you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> $100 worth of cigars. What does a C-note really bring back into this country? You know, probably five or six cigars, but it's for your own personal consumption. It's not to, uh, you know, you're not going to open up a cigar yeah. store with that, but... It's it's a first step, Sam. Right. That's really what that yeah. is. It's a token, token offer. Yeah, Tom. Tom, you you mentioned that they're going to mix blends like they mix whiskey, and Correct. they're going to take all and they're going to just mix everything. So from you'll different... have a cigar that will have some Nicaraguan tobacco in it, perhaps some Ecuadorian tobacco, some Cuban tobacco. The the X factor is the Cuban tobacco. That's right. The cigars that we currently smoke in America today are blends of. Uh, Connecticut, Honduran, Dominican, Nicaraguan, Ecuadorian, Peruvian, Mexican tobaccos. The X factor being Cuban, it's never been in there before. Wow! And and so these master blenders are going to well, have access. I to I want that. to talk yeah. about another X factor. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it. You mentioned Connecticut. I mean, hmm. it's. I would say most people are unaware of what's going most on. Most people don't realize that the United States produces some of the. Finest, most expensive cigar, premium, premium cigar tobacco. tobacco. So in Connecticut, up in the Connecticut Valley, two types are produced: is shade tobacco, which is generally used as a wrapper, and then there's also Connecticut um, broadleaf. It's a totally different seed variety. It's a bigger leaf, thick, grows out in the sun. They grow similar tobacco, uh, broadleaf that is, in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area. And recently, in the last year or two, there's been a group that are starting to grow um, premium cigar tobacco in Florida. They had their first harvest this year, and it takes about three years to age the tobacco before it's going to actually be used in a cigar. So we won't know for a couple of years what that's going to taste like, but it's an exciting 
next next step. All right, you're uh, talking about an exciting next step, but I mean, you're in the business 25 to 30 years, I'd say. That's mm -hmm. a fair estimate. Thank you for being. Why don't here. you uh, bring us down memory lane to the right to the president, present about how the business has changed and it's become so exciting. Well, a few things, Sam. There's there's the aspect of of choice. You you know, 25, 30 years ago, it was uh, outside of Cuba. It was it was basically the Canary Islands and the Dominican Republic that were producing premium cigars. It was a small amount being made in the Philippines. All all those scenarios still exist today, but in subsequent years, you've had uh, Honduras, Costa Rica, Peru, Panama, Brazil. Um, and most notably Nicaragua, not only producing cigars, but growing tobacco for cigars and growing different strains. So the, the iterations, if you will, the, the access to raw materials has grown exponentially. So they can offer now greater variety in the types of cigars that we've uh, never experienced in you know, 25 years prior. And, you know, Beyond that, you know, things like packaging innovations and, um, you know, it's easier to keep cigars fresh today with small little humidifiers <coughs> that go into uh, the cigar boxes themselves. You don't need to have a $1,500 humidor in your house right. anymore to yeah. keep your cigars fresh. Tom, possible. I've got a question to ask you. How do I become a cigar taster? Just like when you go to a, the winery and you taste all the, the wines and everything mm -hmm. and which one you want to you get, you get and everything else. Are there any uh, cigar tasters that will tell you whether oh, the cigar is good, no good, no good? Tell us a about good that. Thing, you know, most um, good um, cigar shops, tobacco shops today, um, once, twice a month will have uh, a tasting, an event in the store sponsored by the manufacturer. Oh, that's wonderful. In, in most cases, the manufacturer will, sell, will send uh, an executive or, or somebody from their management team that will come and will teach the audience about what's unique about their product, how their product is made, where the tobacco comes from, how it's aged. And then they will take you through the different cigars in their line, a tasting, just like you'd have at a, at a bourbon tasting or a wine tasting. Yeah. And actually start to teach you how to, you know, not only smoke the cigar, but recognize certain flavor profile. How do we find out the dates and the times that we can go with You know, the stuff? internet, like everything today, is a great source. If you just Google on their cigar events, yeah, it'll bring you to any one of a number of web pages, and they generally will ask you what, by zip code, where you want to be. Yeah, yeah. And the listing will come up, and it'll be by date, and oh, that's there wonderful. you go. And these are things that are, you know, they're free. You just go into the store. You, you know, maybe buy a cigar or two. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but you'll be able to taste them. It's, there's nothing, there's no great barrier. You, know, yeah. you don't have to be a member of a club. Yeah. You don't have to be an experienced cigar smoker. You don't have to buy 10 or $15 cigars to enjoy this process. There's plenty of great products in the $3, yeah. 4 $5 you know, price And range. speaking of clubs, um, since you have got into the industry, have you seen the rise of clubs um, such here in New York City where you have Club Macanudo and merchants mm -hmm. and clubs yes. like that. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, New York is probably a bad example of Manhattan because there's, there's a limit by law. They, they were grandfathered in. But in other parts of the country, what's happened over time, many of the very fine cigar stores, tobacconists, have expanded the footprint of their store to include a nice lounge where, you know, when people come in to buy a cigar, if they particularly don't want to be in an environment with smoke, that's fine. Uh, they, you go off to a sort of a nice appointed private lounge, plenty of TVs, coffee. Um, you know, some of them are very uh, exotic in terms of having a, a liquor license and such. Yeah. And it's just a nice yeah. place to relax. And again, most of them are not uh, private in the sense that you have to be yeah. a member or anything like that. It's just you, know, you go in. The tobacco to help you pick out a cigar that you know would probably yeah. be uh, 
most enjoyable for you? I used to love the the old Indians, the old Indian oh, statues that used to stand. Uh, they're worth be, a fortune now. Yeah, they're worth a fortune, I know. They are. I know. I used to love to see all those things. They're just wonderful. You have to yeah. go to a museum today to see them. Yeah, well, I know. You know, Josie Ann has uh, a lot of pictures that we have to uh, sh show and everything else. And Josie Ann, by the way, is in the uh, control room, ladies and gentlemen. She's in the control room and she's doing all the sound herself. And she does all the uh, uh, all the the camera work and all the the CG, the printing and everything else. And uh, you know, so uh, thank God for Josie Ann. It is her show, Persons of Interest. And Josie Ann, where are all these these wonderful pictures uh, with Tom uh, that you can show us right now? Well. Obviously, maybe she's rolling cigars, yeah. too. There, there we it go. is, Sammy. Okay. Yeah. And what do we got here? Just, it looks like four or five cigars. One of them's lit. And one of them is lit, and one is not burning. I think I passed that question. One is not burning perfectly, but That's right. it's burning okay. Yeah. Next. This is uh, an example of some of the, um, the artwork that goes into rolling cigars. That cigar, the, the wrapper, there's actually three different leaves. They've used a light, like Connecticut shade wrapper, a strip on the foot. Yeah. Two little strips up near the head. Yeah. And you can barely see, like, there's a little, almost like pencil eraser type tip to the yeah, cigar. Yeah, but those leaves look like they're black compared to the brown. The dark ones, uh, would be a Maduro wrapper. But those, this is a product that's totally made freehand by hand. Okay. Uh, by the roller. Uh, only the most experienced rollers would get to make a cigar like that. Um, they're not only pleasing to the eye and, uh, you know, because they are so pretty and uh, yeah. unique. Yeah, they're but, beautiful. But, you know, they're also very delicious to smoke as well. Wow. And oh, that's, that's... Oh, my God. My Where wife of 37 years. Yeah. So how does she tolerate she's, cigar smoke? She's held up all these years. She's been my biggest okay. supporter. Okay. Uh, this is a typical cigar uh, tasting, a party that we were talking about before. Oh, I'd love to find uh, one. Yeah. The fellow just right of center is George Brightman. Okay. He's one of the uh, founders of Cigar Aficionado magazine. He's... Uh, a legend in the cigar industry, a, a wonderful guy, and he's sort of an ambassador for the industry and goes around to various groups t teaching about the history of uh, the cigar industry and uh, and such. And he, he does a great guy. job. He does a great job of making John Q. Public the average, the average citizen who smokes a cigar, a celebrity in his magazine. How many times do you see unknowns? In, in the pages right. of Cigar Aficionado. That's Absolutely. a great magazine. Okay, what do we got next? Oh, here we this go. This is a typical shot in the factory at a roller's bench. Yeah. Um, they work in pairs of two. This particular person is putting the binder leaf onto the cigar. Okay. Which holds the fillers together. And then the, the partner that would be to the left of them will then take that cigar and put on the outer leaf, the wrapper, um, and then the how, how many yeah. cigars is there a, a quota that's expected to be rolled There's per hour? Not a quota, but um, generally a pair working together like that in the course of a day can make about 140, 150 cigars. Wow. It's a lengthy, time consuming process. How many leaves are in one generally cigar? Generally about seven. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, and this now, is a brand that, um, that, that we own called Foil. It's made in the a very small, famous factory in Honduras called Raices Cubanas. Mm -hmm. um, the cigar recently in um, Cigar Insider was the highest rated cigar. Received the 92, and uh, another shot of it there. It's a, and it, this is an example of what we call boutique cigar. They're yeah. made in small batches yeah. of about 100, 150 boxes. Wow. Much kind like, of like a limited wine. Like a wine yeah, or like, yeah. a, like a single barrel. Now, um, what would bourbon. the cost of a cigar like that be? Tom? About $8. Yeah, okay. And what the, about this? This cigar here was Cigar of the Year uh, two years ago in Cigar Aficionado. It's a Dominican product. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular size, the DeSocio, uh, is named after my maternal grandfather. Okay. And uh, we're very proud of that. And that's a wonderful medium-bodied cigar. Yeah. It, now, is that more expensive than the other cigar? That's about eight, nine dollars. Yeah. As well. Okay. All right. Go ahead. This is what's called sorting. This in the factory, these are all wrapper leaves. Mm -hmm. They're going to go on the outer part of the cigar, and they sort them for color so that every cigar in the box is uniform in the in the in the color of the outer leaf. Yeah. And the, do, do the wrappers uh, come from different uh, different origins, or are they different countries? So all these different colors. Well, wrapper leaves are grown in about six different countries. I I don't know for a fact here if this is from a single farm or single country, 
But it's another example of how every step in the making of a cigar from the time the seed is put in the ground till the time you smoke it is done totally by hand. Now the darker, the darker leaf is a little sweeter, a better it, aroma? It, no, it, I wouldn't say better. It's, it, it could generally be sweeter. It's called uh, Maduro. Um, it's a leaf that um, is a little hardier. It's it fermented a little bit longer, mm -hmm. so it does tend to be a little bit sweeter. Uh, this is bit, the governor of uh, Connecticut, our current governor, is a good man. He played rugby at Boston College when I played at Fordham. He was a year ahead of me. Yeah, yeah, all right. And, is, uh, is, is he a, a, a he's cigar smoker? He's an occasional smoker? cigar smoker. All right. he's, a, he's, a, he's a good man, good ah. friend. This is just uh, some examples of uh, how Cuba and Cuban cigars, you know, sort of matriculated into all aspects of our life back to, in the 20s and 30s. Yeah, in yeah. Music, oh, wow. Uh, in art uh, yeah, as yeah. well. Um, in cartoon art, uh, Punch magazine. Now, does that have anything to do with the, chur the Churchill hat? Oh, look at this. Oh, for God's sakes. Look at this. <laughs> it's just a picture we enjoy. You know, it's, just, it's from the 20s. It's, yeah. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful that's American. And this is a um, <laughs> cigar shop in the Philippines, in Manila, back in the late 90s. Um, you know, people sometimes, are, they think cigar shops, they think of America or Cuba or yeah. Europe, but um, we'll see some pictures later in, in Korea and other countries. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is at the Kentucky Derby in 98, I think, Silver Charm. Uh, we provided all the cigars there at the racetrack for, for many years. Oh, my, how wonderful. And that's another shot there as you came into the, into the owner's section of the grandstands mm -hmm. there. Uh, it's me back in the in the eighties at U.S. Tobacco was a series of ads that we used in print for uh, Copenhagen and Skull. Uh, this is in the United Arab Emirates, a cigar store there that uh, was featuring two brands. I I I helped create Austral. And yeah, how many different Tomas. brands do you do you have, uh, Tom? How many different brands? Uh, today, Alliance Cigar sells about um, there's about thirty eight hundred different. SKU, so that it's probably about uh, 150 different brands. 100, and how many do, does your company have? But those, those we distribute. That that oh, cigars. 150 different, brand. different yeah. brands. Oh, easily. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the uh, the price ranges for uh, for these cigars. What, yeah, what on they, average, probably about four dollars up to about twenty. Wow, I see. Okay. Uh, now this is a cigar shop in uh, in Holland. You can see my little Don Tomas brand. There. Okay. This is the Canary Islands. Um, not so prominent today as it was back in the 80s, mm -hmm. early 90s as a cigar producing uh, country. The, I guess the cost of labor there sort of priced the Canary Islands out of the marketplace compared to Central America. Yeah. These what? are actually Cuban wrapper leaves. This is in Canary Islands mm -hmm. um, where, where Cuban tobacco is uh, legal. This is uh, Philippines, mm -hmm. a cigar shop there, a cigar store. Very typical, very similar to uh, most countries. Yeah. Other than the fact that they also sell liquor in, in many of the cigar shops and. Oh yeah, the, yeah, to, to the tasting and everything else. Uh, uh, what is the difference between the wrapper and the uh, and the inside of the cigar? The inside is generally um, not prized for its 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 appearance. appearance. It's more prized just for its flavor and uh, and and. Combustion. Yeah. The the wrapper is. It's got to be something beautiful. It's or also, rapid. you know, it's almost first and foremost prized for its its uniformity and its appearance. Yes. People don't like to pick up a cigar that has big veins, pronounced veins, yeah. or different colors or blotches or, or, or such. So, yeah. um, if it doesn't pass muster in terms of being Kentucky. first grade quality to the eye, it's yeah. going to become a wrapper. Yeah. All right. Kentucky What's that? Derby? Kentucky Derby again. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. Good old days. Uh, Caribbean, uh huh. Probably a Cuban cigar because we're out of the country there. A Cuban cigar. Oh so. my. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, this is a typical shop in 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 Connecticut. This is one of those tastings I was telling you about uh, yeah. that that go on uh, uh, throughout throughout the month in most cigar stores. But it's a good opportunity to learn about different products and different brands and. And different flavors how to, and how everything to store else. Store the cigars. Yeah. This is Augusto Reyes. He's the sixth generation. Uh, tobacco grower and cigar maker in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. This is what's called the draw test. His factories was one of the first to 
would, uh, this is a, about as high tech as you're going to get in the factory. It, it, it tests the cigar to make sure it's not plugged. Oh, something really? They something they do not do in Cuba. Oh, because I used to, uh, you know, stick a thing in the end of the cigar all the time. You shouldn't the, have to do that. I shouldn't? <laughs> no. Oh, It my. should burn uh, properly because of the, it was made properly. This is in Brazil. Another shot in Brazil. This is uh, de-stemming where they'll take the, the leaves and take the center stem out. Mm -hmm. um, How much waste is there in tobacco? Not much because even like those stems, they'll grind them up and they can use it as fertilizer. Oh. Compost. Uh, in Brazil, as well as the factory in Brazil uh, um, that that we work with for many years. How big are these factories? How many workers do they have? Yeah, and there that are. factory there would probably have about 200 workers. Okay. Uh, that factory is owned by the Menendez family, which in Cuba they they own the factory that made Monte Cristo. So oh, really, they, oh, they left Cuba uh, when Castro took uh, reign. They they moved to uh, Brazil and opened a factory down there. Hmm. And you also distribute the Monte Cristo as well, the cigars? The one made in the Dominican Republic, yeah. yes. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. It's a fine cigar. As You know, there are representations in the U.S. market of many of the famous Cuban brands, yeah. albeit the ones that we buy and smoke here are yeah. made in the Dominican Republic or Honduras. So right. like the, uh, this is Hoya de Monterey from Cuba. Okay. This is just a box, uh, about 30 years old. The Hoy de Monterey that we smoke in the United States is made in Honduras. Now, is there a copyright uh, by any particular company that, you know, you see different variations of, of named cigars? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to ask the next question. All right. Okay. If you're talking about trademarks, I understand that uh, the, the, these companies have trademarks here in the U.S., which have been upheld because... Up to now, we haven't re we haven't re uh, recognized the, the Cuban government as a, a legal entity to register a trademark. Yeah. I'm sure there's quite a bit of haggling going on to see who's going to have rights to to, to to what when there's full opening of the market. But um, yeah, that's that's an issue. Yeah, it is. All right, Tom, I got to ask you this. Sure. Okay, now. A lot of brands have all kinds of knockoffs and everything else. Are there knockoffs in uh, uh, cigars? There's knockoffs. For certain of Cuban cigars, yeah. Um, most I tell most of my friends when they go on vacation to the Caribbean or Mexico and they come back and they say, "Oh, I a guy came up to me on the beach and sold me ten Cuban cigars for ten bucks." I said, "Great, I mean, he sold you ten cigars." Yeah, yeah, 10 yeah, cigars. yeah, right. Um, if I was out of the country, I would only buy Cuban cigars in the officially appointed Cuban merchant Cuban store, the Habanos okay. store. Those are stores that are licensed by the Cuban government. But the packaging is the same and everything. Yeah, and if you look mm -hmm. close enough, you'll see that. Just it's like, like those any counterfeit, counterfeit tickets outside Madison Square Garden. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. look close enough. Yeah, yeah. There's even been counterfeits of the non-Cuban brands, like the very famous Fuente Opus X or Padrones and some of these products. Um, is it an, is they, it they generally get caught. Is it a quickly. big industry problem? No, not really. I think for the Cuban government, it's a big issue. Um, and probably will remain one for a while. But for the non-Cuban products, except for the very, very few, it's, it's really not a big issue. Yeah, how, how, how could somebody tell whether it's a knockoff or, or, or not? They have to, uh, in a uh, cigar. Uh, well, if you're a consumer of the product, the regular consumer of the real product, you're going to taste the difference. You're going to taste it, yeah. And you'll recognize when you look at the box, there's always things, shortcuts that the, the, the people that are trying to counterfeit it take. And I'm sure it's like anything else. Occasionally, I'm sure they do even fool uh, the, the most merchant, knowledgeable. Sure. But uh, yeah. generally, uh, a good merchant um, is going to catch it. Wow. Isn't that something? Yep. Wow. My goodness. All right, Tom, listen, uh, you know, we, we, have a, we have a few minutes left. Uh, um, that, uh, tell us about, you know, uh, you know how, how people can reach you, how they can find out, uh, you know, everything, what's going on as far as the... Uh, uh, if uh, tell us once again as far as these uh, these tastings, these cigar tastings, mm -hmm. I'm I'm very interested. I want to know where, where they are so I can go and I can taste these cigars myself. Well, a, wow. a couple of good <laughs> websites are like the cigaraficionado.com yeah. website or cigarevents.com. Yeah, you go on and there'll be a, a button for events. You click that on. Yeah, you put in the state or your zip code, um, and then it will list in chronological order. Um, tastings, events that are going to be taking place in your area. 
and there'll yeah. normally be even a link to a website. It, most of these events are run by a cigar store. It's yeah, a and w what entails uh, not only the cigar, but what else does the consumer get at these? Oh, they run cigar the gamut. Parents. I mean, there's there's big events like. Um, Cigar Fest, which takes place in May out in Pennsylvania. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's a three-day event. Oh, wow. And they have wine tastings and beer tastings. They have music. They have uh, And how do we find out about contest. that now? How do we get again, that? Again, if you just go to those two websites, again, it's going to chronologically give you all the events that take place. The oh. typical event is held in a store. They might they might have two or three cigars they're tasting. The owner may have some food. Yeah. They may have some uh, coffee and soft drinks or... Um, beer, and uh, but they, the most important part, there will be someone there either from the manufacturer or from the staff of the store that will walk you through, is going to break the cigar down just like you'd break down uh, a fine glass of wine or a scotch or even a food, as, as if you were going to cooking school and learning how to prepare a meal yeah, yeah. and how to taste it, what to look for and the differences in products, and what makes a difference yeah. in terms of the raw materials that go into okay. it. What inspired you to name a cigar after your grandfather? Great question. Uh, the story goes, and it's, um, you know, it's a painful truth that my mother, a few years ago, uh, was dying of uh, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and one day visiting her, she was quite upset, more than usual, and said to me, when I pass, it's the end of my, my family, the end of the DeSocios. And I said, how could you say that? You've got so many wonderful grandchildren, five wonderful children. She goes, no, but no one that carries the name DeSocio. I had told the story to a couple of friends in the industry, and they all, from uh, my father's cigars, Pepin Garcia, to um, Rafael Nodal, who owns Aging Room, uh, Alan Rubin, who owns uh, Tempest and Prensado, uh, the Oliva family that own uh, Oliva V. Milano. These are all Cigars of the Year in Cigar Aficionado magazine. They all made an exclusive size of their number one brand uh, in recognition of my grandfather. And we brought the cigars, the boxes, and piled them up in my mother's room. And, and it's something and to live proud, forever. She would give them out to um, you know the doctors and nurses that, and that. We've, you know, put it in the marketplace. They've all been highly received, and it's just it keeps my my maternal grandfather's name out there. He was also, uh, you know, I never had the opportunity to meet him, but my aunts would tell me he loved cigars. He was an immigrant from Italy, uh, hardworking uh, man, and that was his one of the few uh, leisure pleasures that he afforded himself. Yeah, yeah, and we're coming to the end of the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for watching Joe Ann's show, Persons of Interest. And please remember, we're on every other Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And we're uh, coming to you from the m and TV studios in New York City. We're on Fios, RCN, and Time Warner. And uh, we want to thank uh, uh, Tom Sullivan for being with us and Sam Albino uh, this evening. And we thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, I'm Danny Darrow. And uh, we're going to see you another time. And um, please watch us again. And Josie Ann will send love and kisses as well. So that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having us. That was great. It was <laughs> wonderful. Thanks for answering that question. That was an important one. That was. Yeah, I wanted, it, you know what I happens sometimes, you know, we, but I'm saying that I think that's so impressive that you, that you would do something like that. Well, thank you. It means yeah. a lot to Good. my family. <clears throat> Did